Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make rose French macarons and I'm also going to be showing you how to draw two different types of designs on your macarons. So I printed out a simple design and a more challenging design. And also, I tried drawing them myself last night and I think they came out pretty good. So this is a simple one and this is the more complicated one. I just did a sketch so it's like really just scribbled in and stuff. But yeah, I'm going to attempt to draw these on my macarons and hopefully they turn out good. So let's get started. First, we're going to start by making the rose flavored filling. The ingredients you'll need will be one and a fourth cups of powdered sugar, one third cup of unsalted butter, one teaspoon of rose water, and if you want a stronger rose flavor, you can add one and a half teaspoons and this is what the bottle looks like you can't really see the rose water in there because it's clear but that's what the container looks like two tablespoons of milk but this I'm not sure if we'll need yet it all depends on the consistency of our filling once we've mixed all the other ingredients so it all depends First we're going to add in our butter and we're going to just blend it. Also you want to make sure that the butter is at room temperature. After the butter is blended it should look something like that. And now we're going to gradually add our powdered sugar. So just add a little bit at a time and don't put the whole thing in all at once. After you've blended in all your powdered sugar, it should look like that. It should look very smooth and creamy. Now we're going to add in our rose water and we're going to mix that in. Now just add a few drops of pink food coloring. and mix it in. Now just fill up a piping bag with the frosting you made. Next we're going to make the macaron shells. The ingredients you'll need for the macaron shells will be three egg whites and make sure to leave them out for at least 20 to 30 minutes at room temperature. To separate the egg yolk from the egg white, you just have to crack your egg in half and then pass the yolk off from one eggshell to the other and just keep passing it off until all of the egg white is in your bowl. One third cup of white sugar, one cup of almond meal or almond flour, it's the same thing and one and a half cups of powdered sugar. First, we're going to beat in our egg whites until they're frothy. And I'm using my KitchenAid stand mixer, but you could use just a regular electric hand mixer for this part. Now we're going to gradually add our white sugar just add a little bit at a time and beat it in. You want to beat your egg whites and sugar until you get stiff peaks. You know you've reached stiff peaks when your meringue is able to stand up on your whisk. Now in a separate bowl, we're going to sift our almond meal and our powdered sugar. 
I'm using a sifter, but you could also use a strainer that works just as well. Now I'm going to sift my powdered sugar into the same bowl. Now just take a spatula and just mix together the sifted almond meal and powdered sugar. Now we're going to gradually add our dry ingredients to our egg and sugar mixture and we're going to fold it in using a spatula. After you fold it in your dry ingredients, we're now going to add our pink food coloring. I'm using a gel food coloring because liquid food coloring adds too much moisture to the batter and too much moisture could ruin the batter. Just fold in the food coloring and make it a little bit darker than what you want because when it bakes in the oven it will get lighter. So make your batter a little bit darker than the color that you want. You know your batter is at the right consistency when you pick it up on your spatula and it drips down in a ribbon shape. Now just put your batter into a piping bag or here I have a special macaron piping tool. And I also have a special macaron sheet where I'll be piping those onto. But you could also use parchment paper or a silicone sheet. Now just grab your tray and bang it on the counter a few times to let out the air bubbles from the macaron shells. Now just leave your macarons to sit for about 30 minutes to an hour before putting them in the oven. Now bake your macarons at 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. Now take your rose buttercream filling that we made earlier and you're just going to pipe it on to your macaron shell and just put a little bit and then take a macaron shell that's the same size and sandwich them together. And now you have a macaron. Now I'm going to show you guys how to draw the two designs that I showed you before on your macarons. So, I have the simple design and the more challenging design. Now the final step is to draw designs on your macarons. This is optional of course, but I think it adds a little extra special touch to it. So I did the simple design and I also tried doing the harder design. And this is what this is what the pictures look like. That's the simple design. And then this one is the harder design. I'm going to start with the harder design just to get the hardest one out of the way. So first, 
what I did was I took my black food coloring marker and by the way I'm going to be drawing these in with red green and black food coloring markers um, so yeah the first thing that you have to do is first if you're going to do the challenging design make sure you find some of your bigger macarons because you don't want to attempt to draw this on a small one because it just won't fit but first I'm going to take my black food coloring marker and so you could go ahead and you know it's okay if the lines aren't perfect just make some little tiny waves as you go along while drawing those lines so just try and follow what I do so so just try and follow what I do I'm going to now be using the black to outline the rows. So I know I didn't draw the black perfectly, but as you could see once again in the drawing, it is very sketchy looking, so you know, it's very scribbly lines and very scribbly colored in. So now I'm just going to take my red food coloring marker and I'm just going to color in the rows, but I'm going to color it in kind of scribbly like it shows in the picture. So you could be pretty messy with this. And then make sure you go like a little bit outside the lines here, a little bit outside the lines here, like that. Looking back at the drawing, I realized I forgot one more line using the black marker. It's right here in the middle. It's just... Now, I'm just using my green and I'm coloring in the leaves. That's how you do the complicated design. I definitely like how my first attempt at it turned out. I think it turned out better. I just think it matches the drawing more, my first attempt. But I tried. So now let's do the simple design, which I did try doing earlier. Now I'm going to show you guys how to do the simple design. So like I showed you guys before, I did I did the simple design and it looks like that. So now I'm going to show you guys how I did it. So I took the red food coloring marker first and what you want to do is you want to draw almost like um, a heart shape and just fill it in and then you're going to draw another hoop, fill it in and then draw a fourth hoop and fill it in.
Now you're going to take your black marker and you're going to draw some black lines on the rows. So just like a curved line on each of the four petals. Then I just drew a black line for the stem, for the start of the stem, rather. And, and now I just drew a curved line for the stem. And then I'm going to take my green marker and I'm just going to draw a few little leaves. Yeah, that's how you do a simple design. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, because I will be posting more baking videos every week, and comment down below any questions you have about this recipe or suggestions for what I could bake in the future, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!